Bonjour tout le monde. Today we're going to be looking at the 40 to 50 word writing task. This is the second task that you will complete on your written French exam paper and you should aim to spend around 15 minutes answering this question. It's a 14 mark question. You'll have the choice between two tasks. For this video, we're going to be looking at a question that relates to context three, my neighbourhood, which is the topic we've been studying in our current booklet. But on the day of your exam, you will be able to choose the question that best suits your knowledge and the topic that you feel the most confident talking about. Three clear accessible bullet points make up the 40 to 50 word task. The first two will be testing your knowledge of vocabulary on the topic and your ability to give an opinion. The third bullet point will always ask you to refer to the future tense. Remember, this means that you must clearly make reference to the future. It does not necessarily mean that you need to use the near or simple future tense. Think about some of the work we've done on the cheats guide to forming the future in this topic. In terms of marks, the 40 to 50 word task is scored out of 14. Your score is broken into two different sections. First of all, there is a score out of nine for content. And secondly, there's a score out of five for language. Take a little look at this grid and familiarize yourself with the types of things you're being asked to do to maximize your marks. Here, in terms of content, the key is to address all three bullet points. So you have to answer all three bullet points. It's asking you for some development of ideas. As we've seen in our work booklet, development means giving a reason, adding an opinion, an opinion starter, linking your ideas with conjunctions and lots of other fabulous things that we've been practicing. It says here that to maximise your marks for content, most of the response will be clear, although some messages may be unclear. Obviously, we are aiming for clarity at all times. Once a content mark has been decided, an examiner will then look to give you a language mark. Again, what we want to be doing is looking at how to maximise our marks. So we're going to look here at this five mark bracket. It's asking for some variety of vocabulary. That means using different types of adjectives, different types of opinion verbs. Can you remember some different nouns linked to the topic so you're not always repeating yourself? We want variety of structures. That means clauses, it means adjectives, it means intensifiers, comparatives, talking about other people, giving other people's opinions, all things that we've been practicing in our lessons since year seven. The examiner will be looking for your sentences to be linked, or at least some of them. That's using your conjunctions or your linking words. And it's going to want accurate language. The errors in there will be mostly minor. So we want spelling accuracy as well as grammatical accuracy. OK, let's take a look at what this means in terms of a checklist. It would be great if we can always be thinking about this checklist as we're completing our 40 to 50 word task. If we can say yes to these questions, then we should be on track to maximizing and getting the highest marks on this 14 mark question. Ask yourself, have I responded to each bullet point? And I'm going to suggest with two bits of information that's gonna guarantee those developed ideas. Have I checked my future tense? Remember that doesn't necessarily mean the simple future or the close near future, it just means you've referred to the future. Have I linked my sentences using connectives? We know loads of these. We don't have to limit ourselves to and, but, and also. There are lots and lots in our booklets that we've practiced. And finally, have I varied my vocabulary and structures? Now that we know what a 40 to 50 word task is asking us to do, how it's marked and what we should be considering as we answer it, let's look at an example, because this is what you are going to be asked to do for your end of unit assessment in this topic. Your task will always be written in English. This will ineb inevitably help you to plan. It says here, write a review of your town for a website. You must include the following points. Where your town is located, your opinion of the shops or facilities, and when you will next 
visit. And we can note here when you will next visit is the bullet point that is asking us to make reference to the future. So here's a model answer for you to look at. I've broken it into individual bullet points. Let's take a look together. J'habite à Norwich, une grande ville historique dans l'est de l'Angleterre. This is answering bullet point one, where my town is located. I live in Norwich, a big historical town in the east of England. And we're thinking about my checklist. Have I included at least two bits of information? Absolutely. I'm in Norwich. It's big. It's historical. It's in the east. Look at that. I've got four bits of information. Five if you include that. I've also said it's in England. These adjectives appear on our vocabulary list that we've been looking at throughout this topic. I've given some complex structures as well in using an adjective in the right order, in agreeing my adjectives correctly as well. Bullet point one, I have covered. Let's look at bullet point two, your opinion of the shops or facilities. We should be thinking about our opinion builders and how we develop opinions. We've practiced that a lot. I've started with an opinion verb. I've got j'aime ma ville car il y a beaucoup à faire. Par exemple, il y a un cinéma et aussi un grand centre commercial où j'adore faire du shopping avec mes amis. My opinion of the shops or facilities. I like my town or city, because there is lots to do. For example, there is a cinema and also a big shopping centre where I love to do shopping with my friends. Once again, have I included at least two bits of information? Absolutely, I have. I've said I love it because there's lots to do. I've said there's a cinema. I've said there's a shopping centre. I've said I love shopping with my friends. Have I linked using connectives? I absolutely have. I've got also, I've got for example, I've got because in there. Have I varied my vocabulary? Yes, I've mentioned lots of different places in town. Thinking about varying my structures, I've got a double verb structure here. I love to do. I've got a clause, a subordinate clause, where. And I've included other people as well with my friends. On to bullet point three then, when you will next visit the town. This is where we're looking clearly for evidence of making reference to the future. When I will next visit the town. I've kept this one nice and simple because I don't need to do any more than this. I've got je vais aller en ville le week-end prochain avec ma mère. I am going to go to town next weekend with my mum. Have I included two bits of information? Yes, I've said I'm going next weekend. I've said I'm going with my mum. Have I checked my future tense? I am going to go. I could have said I would like to go. I could have said I intend to go. I hope to go. But in this case, I've used I am going to go. Yes, I have absolutely covered that bullet point. And if we look at the very bottom here, you can see I've added up my answer. That is 58 words. All of it using simple but accurate language from the topic that we've studied. And I reckon you could all give that a go. So why don't you try it in preparation for your end of unit assessment? How could you adapt this model? How could you use what you've seen this topic to answer these three bullet points and maximise your 14 marks? Don't forget your checklist and good luck. Au revoir.